Hello artist, my name is Oscar Fernandez, I am a digital sculptor, and although normally my work takes me more towards the theme of collectibles or figures for printing, today I would like to show you a workflow with which we are going to be able to make expressions in our characters in a completely professional way, and escaping from that boring and repetitive technical process that involves doing this task either from scratch or with traditional methods. For those of us who are ZBrush lovers, the use of this tool is going to be a real revolution as we are only going to worry about the artistic aspect. ZBrush Face Tools will take care of the entire technical process. On this occasion we are going to take an icon of universal art, Salvador Dali. To try to push Face Tools capabilities to the limit, I will create a caricature of the character. So the initial step is to begin with the graphic documentation, conducting a search for authentic photographs of Dali himself. Since I'm not a very good artist, I have also looked for references of some cartoons to analyze the most representative deformations of their faces, and thus make my own version. After spending a little while drawing, this would be the result. I know, I know, it's not great, but at least I have an address to start working with my model. Round eyes with small pupils to emphasize the eccentric point of the painter, well-defined lips, and his characteristic moustache will be sufficient for the character to be perfectly recognizable and also likable. If all goes well, the 3D version will improve throughout the process. Our project will start with the use of a base model from Character Creator. The mesh of this model provides us with a universal topology, perfect for animation and of course for sculpture. Once the model is loaded, we can go to the Materials tab to decrease the intensity of the textures to zero and focus only on the volumes. I will continue creating the base of our character from the Morphs tab, where I will use the combination of two character creator characters to give our model a cartoonish look to the body. I will also load some eyes and teeth in accordance with the style. To conclude, I will load the set of neutral wrinkles. Once the foundation of our model is established in Character Creator, we simply need to click the Face Tools button to transfer the character to Zebras. This will open the first window of the tool and we will start the configuration. As this is the first time we send the character to Zebras, we will select Create New in the Action field. The next field will correspond to the number of subdivision levels in Zebras. When subsequently creating the normal diffuse and cavity maps, Level 6 will correspond to a 2K resolution, while Level 7 will correspond to a 4K resolution. In my situation, a total of 6 subdivision levels will be sufficient. We make sure to select the Normal Details option and ultimately click on the Go Z button to transfer the character to ZBrush. After several operations and once the model is loaded, we will only see the head, since this tool is focused on our work on the character's face. We proceed to Z-Plugin and access ZBrush Face Tools. Prior to initiating work, I'm going to configure my project, encompassing the background color, canvas resolution, various rendering parameters, and save the file as a project in both ZBrush and Character Creator software applications. In the plugin panel, we have the ability to activate the range option, which will load a texture. This texture allows us to visualize both the topology of the mesh and the regions that will be affected by the different expressions. If you are a traditional digital sculptor, you must take into consideration that we already start from a perfect topology, so it is extremely important to try to respect the directions of the loops in order to obtain optimal results. Let's refrain from using brushes that, so to speak, add material such as all the clay variants or some that deform the topology excessively, like pinch, snake hook and so on. The goal is to work at level 1 of subdivision to achieve the basic shape and work with brushes like Move or Dam Standard to gradually deform the mesh and always look for smooth lines in those loops we mentioned. If the low mesh functions effectively, the high mesh will produce extremely smooth and uninterrupted lines that will be ideal for deformation in expressions. For the hair and eyebrows, I simply made a mask in the corresponding area, used extract to generate the mesh and after creating the basic shape, I used Zramesha to have an organized mesh and be able to subdivide a couple of times, add some detail with the slash 2 brush, etc. Once this is done, all I have left is to adjust the position of the teeth and the tongue, and I'm ready to send the character back to Character Creator and see how it behaves. 
Before making any updates to the ZBrush model and bringing it back to Character Creator, please ensure that the model itself is selected in Character Creator. Selecting any other mesh or accessory will activate a pop-up window and cancel the update process. By pressing the Update to Character Creator button, a window will open that may be a little scary at first, but now we will see that it is incredibly easy to understand. Up to now, we've only focused on the character's foundation, so we'll deactivate the entire section for expressions. Well, now this is much simpler. Currently, we have only taken action on the base, so it is the only button that we are going to keep active. And inside the base, we have modified the head, the tongue, teeth and the eyes, so we will activate them as well. Using this config, what we will send to CC is the info corresponding to level 1 of subdivision. But as we have sculpted using higher levels to achieve the final result, we are also going to activate details normal. With this, the normal map we mentioned earlier will be generated, so we'll have all the details of our model and we'll also be able to adjust its intensity in Character Creator. In this case, we will not activate Cavity Blend, since it would generate a cavity map that is not necessary in our case, but works great for realistic models. At this moment, simply click on Update to gain access to the Character Creator. Seabras initiates the process of sending all the information to Character Creator. And when we finish, we can return to CC once more, where once again we do not have to be concerned about anything. We press Update and the automatic process continues. Here we can already see the difference between the original base mesh and the modified model in Cybras. Now we are also going to send the hair, eyebrows and moustache. To do this, we just have to hide all the sub-tools by clicking on the eye icon and pressing visible to send these elements back to Character Creator. Once inside CC, we configure these parts as accessories and click on update. Maybe we need to make some adjustments in the position for better accuracy. To make each of these accessories become a genuine part of our character's face, we simply need to go to the Attributes panel, click on Create Hair, Eyebrows, Beard, and choose the behavior type for each of them. Once configured, in the Facial Editor we can verify that everyone behaves as expected. If we desire to modify this behavior, we can navigate to assign conformable regions, in the case of hair, or to facial hair vertex assignment in the case of the mustache, and define the vertices that will influence each of these elements. By doing so, we can have complete control over the deformation of both when making modifications to the expressions, thus ensuring absolute control over the final outcome. We'll proceed with customizing our character, texturing the skin using polypaint for a more personalized look and feel. We will simply apply the colors to the skin shade material progressively until we achieve the desired appearance. And ultimately, we will send it back to Character Creator through the update function to Character Creator. Once again, logic will guide our decision-making process. Therefore, if we have only made changes to the polypaint, we will only choose polypaint diffuse in the options for the base texture. And since we have only changed the polypaint of the head, we will only select head in the parts that we will send to Character Creator. When bringing color information to CC, it gives us the option to also apply the values to the body. So despite having only painted the face, the coherence between one and the other is perfect. After adjusting the lighting parameters of the scene a little, now everything looks as it should. So it's time to go back to Cybras and start with the truly important part of this workflow. In fact, what Face Tools does automatically is it creates a series of layers that will produce different deformations in the mesh in order to generate the expressions. In the Expressions section of the plugin, we see that we have 13 base expressions that we can work with. Later, these expressions will be combined in CC and gradually merged, resulting in an infinite number of outcomes as we will observe later on. To have a reference of how the eyebrows are going to behave, I'm going to paint them directly on the skin. At first, we loaded the pack of neutral wrinkles into our model, so when pressing each of the buttons, in addition to the deformation of the mesh corresponding to each expression, certain wrinkles also appear that already give personality to our model. We can use these wrinkles as a guide or smooth the mesh at each subdivision level so that they disappear completely and start our work from scratch. But I will start with the expression of raising eyebrows. As we saw when creating the base of our character, it is best to work on the lowest level of its division while looking for the shape and gradually increasing to define the details. 
while consistently endeavoring to follow the topology direction when generating wrinkles, our focus in the update to character creator window will be solely on selecting the update for expressions and wrinkles, disregarding other options. And activate the buttons so that the corresponding morph and normal map for wrinkles are generated. How are we going to generate our own custom wrinkles by sculpting in ZBrush? We will deactivate the normal checkbox, since this option is focused on controlling generic wrinkle packs. We could handle all the wrinkles and ultimately export back to Character Creator, but in my case, I'm going to do it one by one, and we will observe the difference. Later, every time I update, I will select the corresponding wrinkle. Here we can see the expressions in their ZBrush version, after having modeled each of the wrinkles. In addition to sculpting the expressions, we can also apply a different poly paint to each one of them to highlight areas that interest us or apply some type of color variation. Those 13 expressions that we modeled in NCBrush correspond to the 13 regions of influence that we see in the wrinkle panel of Character Creator. So now let's see the difference between the generic version and the customized version based precisely on those 13 regions. I couldn't resist doing the complete character, since if we combine facial expressions with body language, we will gain a lot of expressiveness. I created the garments in Seabrus quickly, unwrapping the UVs and painting or texturing directly in this program. By having the UVs, we just have to generate the normal map and the diffuse, so that they are applied directly in CC, and we can see it textured. We press the visible button once more and take it to Character Creator. Upon entering Character Creator, just choose the garment, press the Weight Transfer button, select the corresponding template, and make any required adjustments to the weights afterwards. Our character is already complete. As you have been able to see, everything we have done so far has been only artistic processes, since all the technical part is completely automated by the tool. We have left behind all repetitive, boring, and detached actions from the creative process, the following will be even more fun. Let's generate distinctive expressions for our character. We will be editing the facial section and can begin defining our expressions at this moment. When creating expressions, we have three options. The first option is Muscles, a super intuitive editor in which we will select a region and simply move the mouse in the desired direction for it to deform. In this editor, in addition to modifying the regions of the face, we can be even more precise by accessing the panel of the eyes, mouth or tongue. The second method would be to choose some of the predefined expressions from the expressions option. The list is huge and we would also have our expression in just one click. The expressions are divided into six categories and some extras that Character Creator also provides us. Happiness, sadness, anger, disgust, fear or surprise. Finally, we will have the option to modify each region using sliders with total precision. The best part is that we can combine the three systems to create our expression. For example, we can start with a predefined expression, then select and modify the position of some muscle group, and finally make some fine adjustments using the sliders. And as we were saying, we can combine it with the body posture to give it greater expressiveness. And of course, both the expressions and our custom poses can be saved in our very own library that we can access anytime. Next, I'm going to show you the result of several poses that I have created. And I could tell you that the realization of the expression and the body posture of each one of them has not taken me more than 10 minutes.
So now we are going to observe the distinction between what would be the generic expression and the expression after customizing it with ZBrush using face tools. I believe that throughout this year, Reillusion has clearly bet on artists, providing us with tools that creative people can precisely invest their time in creating and not waste efforts on boring and repetitive technical processes. The presentation of Character Creator Pose tools seemed like a real revolution when it comes to posing characters, since we could create them completely from scratch and then bring them to Character Creator to make dynamic poses in a supernatural, intuitive and even fun way. Now, with the introduction of this Cypress Face tools, it is true that we depend on a base mesh, but it has a perfect topology, and as we have seen, we can push it to the limit, and it still behaves great. Therefore, I believe that the use of this type of tools, in addition to the undeniable increase in productivity, provides us with something that we all were wishing for. And the truth is that, throughout our process, the only thing we will have to worry about is enjoying ourselves.